What would you say you do here? Do I really look like a guy with a plan? I'm just sick of all the amateur stuff, you know? I mean, like, if I'm paying top dollar, I want a little production value, you know? Like some editing, transition, something, some music. What changes do we need to make so that print like that never again sees the light of day? I'm talking about a complete overhaul of the Z-axis. These cylindrical rods and bearing mounts I used on X are less accurate and degraded over time, ruining the quality of my prints. I mean, I've got a standard for printing to live up to. Now, I'm using the linear rod rails. My new design for the printer in PrintX would incorporate two linear rod rails and two lead screws to elevate my Z-axis. It's a pretty good design. Everything would connect to the bed carriage by using 3D prints. That part should be pretty easy to manufacture. The only negative is the new design would require two additional aluminum extruded frames to hold the linear rod rails vertically in place and would require me to tear apart the printer to add them. Risky or bold move? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. The first step is to make the bed carriage, the part that holds everything together. And my choice of material would be hardwood. Using the laser cutter and engraver to make this part allowed me to bruise it very quickly and accurately. I definitely only needed one attempt to cut this out and definitely didn't burn my first cut or anything like that because I'm a pro. Wrong. The next step would be to use our 3D printers to produce the mounts that I would need to connect to the bed carriage. It's not lost on me and I do see the irony here using a 3D printer to build a 3D printer, but come on, you gotta stick to what you know. Our new redesign required four mounts, a front, back, left, and right, that would connect to the bed carriage by using an M3 screw and nut. Assembling the hardware to the prints only required bolting everything together. The lead screws would stay on the left and the right side, while the new linear guides would attach to the front and back prints. A little warning for my fellow linear rod fans, don't remove the stops on the ends of the rods. You could lose the block and the ball bearings. Resist that urge until you're putting the rods in their final spot. This is where the fun begins. Now it was time to get everything installed on the printer. This would require a partial teardown, and as I mentioned, I would have to install two more aluminum extruded rods. I would also be replacing the stepper motors. I bought some motors with a taller lead screw, and this would increase the build volume of this printer. I also will be replacing the bearing mounts that hold the lead screws at the top in place. Mine seemed to break after continuous use. Now, you may be wondering, how are you going to attach these vertical rails to the frame of the printer? And with that, I will direct your attention to our redesign. In the redesign, 
the blue prints are separate pieces that will need to be printed on our 3D printers. These will hold the rails vertically at the top and bottom in place by using a M3 screw to connect to the frame of the printer. Yeah, so I threw these on the Ender, really giving the Ender a good workout for this build. I needed four total pieces to hold the rails in place, and they turned out pretty good, pretty quickly produced, and came out within a few hours. Now we would just need to go ahead and mount them on the printer. Here's a shot of the final assembly with the top and bottom mounts for the guide rails in place. Now the rails itself would slide into the bottom 3D print and the top 3D printed mount would hold the rails in place with the screw. That's a nice shot. Now you know I always get everything done perfectly and correctly on the first attempt. I just nailed the design. Not forgetting about anything when I installed the bottom 3D printed mount like PVC or nothing like that. Wrong. Yeah, I forgot about the PVC sheet that was used to hold all the electronics in place. This print can't sit on top of this sheet and would need to sit directly onto the extrusion. So what to do? The simple solution would be to cut out a slot to make way for the extrusion or or I could design and cut a new sheet by using the laser cutter to cut a sheet of acrylic. I chose the latter. And of course, since I do everything perfectly the first time, it came out amazing and there were no errors or anything to speak of and I got it done on the first attempt. Wrong. Man, that laser made me look bad on that first attempt. With the new acrylic sheet cut out on the second attempt, I would just need to install that to the printer and mount all the electronics back on the printer. The new acrylic sheet would not interfere with that bottom 3D printed mount. All right, we need one more print. This print would be a mount for the bearing mounts that hold the lead screws from the stepper motors in place. Now these mounts directly mount to the frame I'm adjusting here. And as you can see, I installed the bed carriage to the mounts. And now I'm gonna go ahead and install the new stepper motors and see how they move. All right, here it is. The finished bed carriage mounted and waiting idly to be tested. Now, to test the motion, since I don't have the upgraded in stops installed, more on that later, I will tell the machine to home the Z axis and press the installed in stop manually. Here's the home test as shown. After I performed the first home test, I did have to make some slight adjustments to the linear rails, but after I made these adjustments, I continued to test it 
and I'm impressed by the motion I'm getting. It's moving very smooth and the design is very sturdy. The level remains pretty consistently as it goes down towards the home, so that's always a good sign. Of course, I won't know until I start printing how this bed carriage is performing based on the quality of print I'm getting. And I will need to make some adjustments for the Z-Step since these are new lead screws. So I do plan on continuing the upgrades to this printer. I'm talking about optical in-stops, linear guides, and the core XY system. So stay tuned because I'm just getting started on this printer. Thank you all for watching this video. Check out our links that are listed in the description of this video below. If you like what we do here, please leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hope your prints turn out awesome and I'll see you all in the next episode.